Hi, my name is Jason Olson. The intent of this video is to help us to understand the relationship between voltage and current in an inductive circuit. So what we have is an AC source and an inductor connected to that AC source. We have to remember how an inductor is built. We will take a wire, some sort of conductor, and wrap it around a core. The core could be just simply an air core, or it could be an iron core, something of that material that has a permeability to allow electromagnetic lines of flux to flow through it. So when I have current that enters that coil, I have an electromagnetic field that is around that conductor. Whenever I have relative motion between a conductor and a, a, a conductor and a magnetic field, I will have an induced voltage. This counter EMF, this induced voltage is very important to understand because that counter EMF will cause a current to flow that opposes the change that produced it. So what we're meaning is as I have current entering that coil, the voltage that is produced from that counter EMF will cause a current to flow in the opposite direction. What this does is limits current within that coil. That causes a phase displacement or a displacement in time between voltage and current because it takes a period of time now for that current to reach its maximum value through that coil and therefore we see the relationship that with an inductor, that voltage will rise to a peak value because the moment of energization, I will have whatever source voltage is at the source, I will have that voltage rise to a peak value across that coil. So if we have 120 volts AC, the point of energization, I will have that same voltage measured across that coil. That takes a period of time. So as voltage is increasing, I have a counter EMF that is building within that coil and causing current to fall behind. So we look at this waveform and we see that voltage is rising to its maximum value and then current, after a period of time, current will rise to its maximum value. So on our phasor diagram, we can represent that exact same thing. I'm going to use voltage as my reference. So I'm going to place it at zero degrees. So that phasor represents the magnitude of the RMS voltage. And this current phasor represents the magnitude of the RMS current. And we see the, see the phase displacement. We see the 90 degree relationship between voltage and current. And we look at our waveform, we see the 90 degree relationship of that current and voltage. When voltage is at a maximum value, current is at a minimum. So one of the things that we have to be able to understand is that Ohm's law, which said that current and voltage are directly proportional. And it is inversely proportional with this opposition. When I look at this coil, we are going to use the inductive reactance of this coil to understand this relationship. This still applies. The thing that we have to understand, when we have an increase in voltage, this still is true. It just takes a period of time before I will have that increase in current. This part of our waveform right here is often a point of confusion because it appears that we have a decrease in voltage while we have an increase in current, which would go against what Ohm's law is saying. But with the properties of this inductor, we know that there's that displacement in time. So when we have a decrease in voltage, after a period of time, we have a decrease in current. So Ohm's law is still true for this circuit. So with this phase relationship, we can see that with an inductive circuit, current lags voltage. And with that inductor, we know by how many degrees or by the time. It is by 90 degrees. So the same statement I could make is that voltage leads current by that same period of time. Hopefully this helps to under 
our understanding with the relationship between voltage and current in an inductive circuit. We'll see you next time.